In this video, I introduce quasi-linear utility, I describe some of its useful properties, and I show how to get the demand curve for quasi-linear utility. A utility function is quasi-linear if it has this form. There's one argument of the utility function that just enters linearly with utility. If we increase y by 1, utility increases by 1, we're going to typically assume that this is a concave function of the other good. Now suppose we wanted to get an indifference curve for this utility function. All we need to do for an indifference curve is specify a set level of utility because remember an indifference curve tells you points of equal utility. And now we can just solve for y. So you can see why we have to have this uh, diminishing marginal utility of x. If we didn't have that, then our indifference curves would actually be concave. I'll go ahead and show you an example with x squared. If we were to go ahead and plot this indifference curve, this would have this sort of shape. And we typically, um, for reasons I've discussed in previous videos, we don't like to have that, tip that shape. And so typically, quasi-linear utility has these two properties. It's uh, got a positive derivative. We like positive marginal utility goods. And also, it's got a negative second derivative. And the result is indifference curves that look like this. They're going to be convex to the origin, just like the general form of indifference curves that we've talked about throughout this channel. That's going to be a nice property when we have these assumptions on the v of x term. So if what's the marginal rate of substitution? Remember that's marginal utility of x divided by marginal utility of y. v prime of x divided by 1. But the marginal rate of substitution doesn't depend on y. All it depends on is where are you in terms of x. You fix an x, and at any point along that vertical line, the indifference curve has to have the same slope. And that slope is going to be given by the derivative of this part of the utility function, the v of x. And this has to be true at any level of y because the marginal rate of substitution does not depend on y. So for example, at points a, b, and c, the indifference curves going through those points are going to have the same slope. So this is a very particular utility function. It has this property of parallel shifts of the indifference curves and the marginal rate of substitution only depends on how much x does this consumer have in his consumption bundle. So to solve for the demand curve, the, the first thing to notice is that the slope's equal condition perfectly pins down how much x. We'll need to be able to invert this v of x function. Once we do that, that'll give us our demand for x. And once we have our demand for x, we can just plug into the budget constraint to figure out how much money we have left over to devote to good y. And those, the, that optimal bundle gives us our demand. Um, so this is just a typical consumer theory problem, but uh, it's, it's a very particular case. And notice it's a particular case in that you can use the marginal rate of substitution equals the price ratio to solve perfectly for the demand for good x. Okay, so let's do an example with the log of x as our function for v of x. Uh, if we take the derivative of our v of x term, um, in this case it's going to be 1 over x, and remember from before, that's going to equal our marginal rate of substitution. We set the marginal rate of substitution equal to the price ratio, invert and multiply, and there's our demand curve for good x. Now what's our demand curve for good y? We can just plug into our budget constraint and solve for y. We get that by plugging the demand in for good, uh, for good x, and now we can cancel the px's. We can factor out the py on this left hand side. Now go ahead and divide through by py and isolate y. And so then there we've solved for the demand for good y. This is the uh, the linear part of the quasi-linear uh, demand curve. Uh, this linear part, it turns out, actually has a, a nice downward sloping demand curve. Uh, also, the quasi part has a nice downward sloping demand curve. So that's quasi-linear utility and how to get a demand curve from quasi-linear utility. Um, it's a nice simplified example from many of the other more complicated settings, and that's why we like it. We, we also like it because we have this good that goes one for one with utility. And so if you think your setting matches up with that, that it goes one for one with utility, then 
you can use this quasi-linearity um, to really simplify the calculation. And those simplifications come at a cost that your analysis isn't as general as, as it would have been uh, if you didn't make that assumption. But if your setting truly is described by quasi-linear utility, uh, it's a useful assumption because it's, it allows you to do simpler calculations.